or try to give you uh, some hope in the treatment of Jupiter. And uh, there should be a disclosure statement somewhere. Yes. Okay. As um, uh, scientists uh, may say, uh, I, I am a, a clinician and I have nothing to disclose neither. Uh, as a surgeon, uh, I still saw that surgical fasciectomy is uh, the treatment of choice. Uh, it needs an extended approach uh, of the diseased tissue in order to remove completely the cord or the cords. The surgeon has basically two options when it comes to, close, to closure. Even an open palm technique, that is no skin closure, or some kind of uh, closed uh, techniques, skin flaps, or graft, as we've seen already. Both have some specific postoperative complications, and of course, as we've seen already, already recurrences are, uh, are frequent, whatever the technique has been applied. <laughs> Aside from uh, uh, the problem of recurrences, uh, immediate postoperative problems uh, are encountered, uh, like delayed skin healing, especially in skin closed techniques. We also have the problem of hematomas. We have seen that we can damage nerves and vessels. And as a consequence of uh, these uh, first problems postoperatively, uh, we'll have uh, decreased mobility problems, stiffness problems, and lately, or as a consequence of all this, a decreased quality of life for patients. A few words about these uh, main techniques. So open palm technique uh, has still many defenders and, and users, but it is applicable in the palm only. At the finger level, you'll have to do some kind of skin flaps. And it's very demanding postoperatively. For the patient, they have to be, uh, to have renewed dressing every day, every second day, for a long period of time. And effectiveness on the recurrence rate has been questioned recently in different papers. Regarding closed skin techniques, they are equally applied in primary cases, and as you may uh, think, I, I, I prefer closed skin techniques. They are recurred to, to various designs, uh, can be uh, Z or VI plasties or zigzag incisions. Whatever the, the technique, usually uh, large skin flaps are elevated. So this leads to skin necrosis and delayed healing. This is an example, it's not one of my cases. At three weeks, uh, a small uh, spot in the middle, uh, right on the nerve, uh, requiring dressing and uh, being annoying, bothering for the patient. So it may also impair early rehabilitation, leading to more complications, edema, infection, and algodystrophy. So uh, my hypothesis was that uh, given the fact that the straight line is forbidden, as everybody knows, it leads also to skin contractures, uh, that uh, we, we have other solutions like the Z-plasties but with rather uh, large flap ele elevation or Brenner incisions also with relatively broad flap elevations. I was sailing on, on the Geneva Lake, and uh, you know when you are against the wind, you have to tack from one side to the other side. And I was thinking uh, maybe I could do 
small tax, well, I don't know if that is the right word, but small tax instead of large tax. And so uh, I thought that it may be possible uh, to raise flaps in a very uh, short way uh, so that we could uh, uh, increase the, the primary skin healing. So my series is a continuous one prospective from uh, November 2007 to November 2009. All patients with uh, uh, unoperated for DP trans disease uh, in my practice. There were 55 cases. Uh, again, a ratio <laughs> between females and males, uh, which seems quite uh, a bit unusual. Mean age was 63 from 29 to 94. Three had a recurrent disease and I operate all of them with a mean follow-up, which is very short, seven weeks, because my main uh, uh, objective was skin healing. Uh, Preoperative staging, uh, I used three ways. First, the number of operated ways. So you see, uh, you have one, two, three, four, or five ways operated. 20 patient, 22 patients with one ray, 17 patients with two rays, 9 patients with three rays, 5 with four, and 2 with five rays uh, operated. Stages according to Tubiana. So you may see that one third has a rather a, a simple stage, so early stage, two thirds are stage two, and one third, one one third, the later third is uh, no, one half. Sorry, and one fourth is uh, stages three and four. Digital extension: twenty patient up to MCP joint, twenty-three patient to PIP joint, and twelve patient to DIP joint. A few words about the technique. In a simple case, so you see the incision with very short arms. The cord, after resection of the cord, and then simple sutures at the tip of each uh, of, of these small flaps. So you, you can see that they have been elevated tangentially, but the, the flaps are very thick, basically, at the base, and there is no big elevation. Words again about that. So four to five millimeters short arms. So I, I do think now that it may be even shorter, but I don't. I think it's technically a bit difficult. Tangential elevation, then as thick as possible. One ray basically uh, leads to one incision. So I have made sometimes up to five. It's coupled with transverse or T incision in the palm when needed, and that is usually with one of the broad and thick aponeurosis in the palm. VI plasties uh, can be used very easily with this technique if you need more skin. And single, single stitches at the flap tips are used. Otherwise, standard fasciectomy, so total fasciectomy. Post-operative grading, <coughs> zero, no skin necrosis at all. One, one limited point of superficial necrosis, two, two to three points of superficial necrosis, or one point of deeper but still dermal necrosis, three, multiple points extended or deep subdermal necrosis. And this was assessed at day five, that is at the first dressing, at day 12 or around 12 for stitches removal, and at four weeks. Some examples to give you an idea. So you can see here one cord, stage two. Here a, a recurrence of the second digit at uh, five, day five. Here a more extended uh, uh, lesion with uh, four ways or four and a half with a small uh, zone here of, uh, of a superficial uh, necrosis which heal completely after that. Sorry. Strange that somebody go. And um, 
you can see here that it was, it was graded uh, stage two, a grade two. And here a more extended one on three fingers, three and a half. Another case where you can see that you can even use two incision on the same digit when you have two chords laterally. And you still have good profusion of, of the skin in the middle. And this is the result at three weeks. Other cases with a transverse palmar incision and the result at three weeks. Another case, again with two incisions on the same finger and result at three weeks. Another case on the radial side of the hand with small incisions again and result functional at three weeks. And last case at five days. So my results overall, uh, you see that uh, I had uh, at five days very few skin necrosis, some limited superficial. After one week, also one week later, you have some more problem, but it's still very limited, and I'm only three, four, sorry, intermediate uh, necrosis. And at one month, uh, it comes back to a quiet uh, process, so no necrosis, and only limited superficial necrosis. I have three complications, uh, three small hematoma that resolved uh, without uh, any uh, further operation or, or action. So what are the advantages of this technique? It's a very simple design, so you can use it very easily. No large flaps, so we have seen that. It is easy to combine with other local flaps, especially the eye. It is versatile and ubiquitous. You can use it everywhere on the, on the hand. It's very easy to learn, and it's also very easy to teach. And it promotes primary skin healing. What can be the disadvantages? Because there might be some. Flap elevation is a bit delicate, so you have to be very careful about that. Skin closure is relatively time consuming. All problems are not solved. I do not pretend that this technique can be used in every case. And of course, I will do dermofasciectomy and graft if necessary. And difficult cases remain difficult cases. No doubt about that. About the recurrence rate with my seven weeks follow up, I have no idea. But I promise I will check this in the future. About recurrence, uh, I just want to quote Houston. It is the patient, not the surgeon, who determines the recurrence by his inherited tendency to the disease. So everybody, I think, is convinced of this. So this is my take-home message. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>